D equals RT. D equals RT. And this formula means distance is equal to rate times time. Your rate can be your speed or your velocity or it can just be a rate. Let's solve for r here. So if we divide by t on both sides, then we would get r is equal to d, r is equal to d over t. So our rate unit would be equal to our distance unit divided by our time unit. So if our rate is miles per hour, it's going to be equal to be equal to miles divided by hours. Let's solve for our t. If we go back to our original thing, original uh, formula here, and we divide by r on both sides, t is going to be equal to the d over r. Let's say a car drives at 50 miles per hour for 3 hours. How far did the car travel? Here we have miles per hour, which is a distance unit divided by a time unit. So this is our rate. So let's underline that in blue. And then three hours, well hours is a time unit, so that is our time. So we have rate and time, we need to solve for distance, so we will use this formula here. So distance is going to be equal to 50 miles per hour, I'm going to write it like this, multiplied by 3 hours. 50 times 3 is going to be equal to 150. And what's our unit going to be? Well, this is distance, so we're going to use our distance unit, miles. But we still have two hours here. So this hour is in a, de a denominator. This one is in a numerator. So we can actually just cancel them. And that's how we know we have used the formula correctly because our units cancel properly. And we are left with miles for our unit. Let's say you run 90 meters in 30 seconds. And you want to know your average speed. Well, 90 meters is our distance unit, so I'll, I'll underline that in yellow. 30 se seconds. Seconds is a time unit, so I'll underline that in pink. So we have distance and time, so we need to solve for our rate. So let's use this formula here. Our rate is going to be equal to our distance divided by our time. So we have 90 meters divided by 30 seconds. 90 divided by 30 is going to be equal to 3, and our unit is going to be rate, so it's going to be distance per time. So we have m divided by seconds. So meters divided by seconds is meters per second. So we'll write it. We'll write it meters per second. So your average speed during the 90 meter run was 3 meters per second. How long would it take to travel 210 kilometers? at a speed of 70, 70 kilometers per hour. Here we have kilometers, which is a distance unit, and we have kilometers per hour, so that's distance per time. So that's going to be our rate. So let's underline that in blue. 
So we have a distance and a rate, so we're going to need to solve for time, so we'll use this formula here. Obviously, you don't need to memorize three formulas. You can just pick one to memorize, and then just plug in your numbers and solve for the missing variable. And the easiest one to memorize is the first one, d equals rt, because there's no fractions to worry about. You don't have to mix up. You don't have to worry about mixing up numerator and denominator. But we have them all written out here, so we're just going to use this. We have time is equal to 210 kilometers divided by 70 kilometers per hour. So 210 divided by 70, well, we can take out these zeros and 21 divided by 7 would be 3, so 210 divided by 70 would also be equal to 3. So 3 in our unit is obviously going to be a time unit, and our time unit here is hours. But let's figure out how we would get that unit. So we have kilometers divided by kilometers per hour. Well, kilometers over hours is a fraction, so to divide by a fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal. So we would have kilometers multiplied and we're multiplying now so we would flip this we would have hours over kilometers so we can cancel our kilometers and we'll be left with our time unit hours so it took three hours to travel 210 kilometers at a speed of 70 kilometers per hour so let's say a bathtub is filling at 60 gallons per minute sorry six gallons per minute for 10 minutes how much water is in the tub and you may be like wait gallons is not a distance unit how does this apply well we still have a rate gallons per minute and we still have a time 10 minutes so let's try this formula and multiply them together because we need to solve for gallons so our units should still work out the same way as if this was a speed d is going to be equal to 6 gallons per minute multiplied by 10 minutes. So we multiply 6 and 10 is going to be equal to 60. And then we can cancel the minutes and we'll be left with gallons. So, after 10 minutes, the bathtub has 60 gallons of water in it. So as you can see, this formula applies to more than just distance.